I don't think I ever realized that the show wouldn't be a part of my life anymore because it it we filmed it over five years, so it just it I'm still like when season four <laughs> like I didn't I never um, concluded it in my body. To me, it it never ended. Was there an episode where my character had the most um, growth or had a, a aha moment? <laughs> um, so Elizabeth's car arc, I feel like, is really interesting because you kind of see her from the very beginning going through the emotions of being very stressed out. I mean, I think Elizabeth, for the most part, was a very... Um, just like a very highly stressed, her confidence was always sort of low, always questioning herself, questioning her relationship with Archibald. Um, and so watching it again recently, I think, I do think that Elizabeth grew. Unfortunately, in a lot of ways, I think she went sort of downhill towards the end. You know, she ended up on pills at one point because of her stress levels and um, it's not really until the end, the very end of season three that, you know, she's sitting with Sophie and Vivian and she seems like she's in a better place and they seem to know that she's in a better place. But um, I think it's also what I appreciate about Elizabeth's character, the truth in that. Um, she didn't have it all worked out and um, she was to up till the very end still growing and still working on herself. I'm on it. Seems good now, right? She's going out for the school play again. No one else stands a chance. How many places became Aunt Jody's house? Okay, there was the house in Westchester. There was some kind of sketchy place in New Jersey across the George Washington Bridge. Um, I like literally had to like get off a bus like on the bridge kind of to get to that place and I screwed it up and somebody had to come find me somewhere. <laughs> oh my God. If you wanted to have a little fun, go look through our episodes and pick out how many Aunt Jody episodes and or you know Aunt Jody locations there were and uh, I bet you if somebody did a blueprint of the house it would absolutely make no sense. Aunt Jody's house was a bit of a wonderland because it was made up of, I think, probably eight or nine different locations. I mean, not that many, but it felt like that. And uh, one room was like super 70s modern. The next room was like 1940s, you know, colonial. It was like schizophrenic home. But uh, it sort of added some interest. Like every time you're on set, like, oh, so this is the house now. Okay, interesting. Oh yeah, Aunt Jody's office was um, in this like weird school. It was really like a zombie apocalypse. That that school, like there was like nobody there. It was like like the rapture had happened, and yet there were like six of us at this empty school, and we had to work pretty hard to make this weird office into something that felt like an office in Aunt Jody's home. It was very sort of industrial, but art department pulled it off. Aunt Jody's house in White Plains was my favorite location as opposed to Aunt Jody's house in all the other places that Aunt Jody's house was. I have several favorite locations that we shot in. One of my favorite locations that we shot in, because I didn't have to be in that scene, was um, the 125th Street subway station uh, off the one where every person and their cell phone and their dog and their mother congregated just when we were filming and just decided to have all of the loud conversations all at once and it was just it was Astor's phone call to Vivian and uh, and I think and I think that was one of like the four minutes where it was extremely hot too it was like hot and it was noisy and it was crowded and nobody cared that there was a camera or if they cared they were like hi we're here too it was there was a lot to contend with. That was one of my favorite ones because I didn't have to actually try to act in it. I just got to watch Nicole have to contend with it. Shouldn't you be on the train? That depends. On what? On which train you're talking about. The subway, the one that takes you to school. Remember school? Well, I, I'm bored with that particular ride. Uh, there's this other train I discovered, it takes you further north. 
Where are you? I could be a commuter. I could hop on a train right now and be with you in 29 minutes. Don't tempt me. Why not? Esther, go to school. Boy, you're bossy. And you love it. <laughs> yes, I do. And need it. You know how close I was to being in the 704? I like thinking about it. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. So I would say I miss um, three things about anyone but me um, the most. I miss um, working consistently, uh, as consistently as we ever did. <laughs> we always like, our, our shoots were kind of all over the place. But um, I miss working with the anyone but me family. And that's in front of the camera and behind. Um, we had such a great crew and bond. Um, and I... Yeah, I miss working with everybody consistently. Um, I also specifically miss working with Rachel um, because Rachel and I are uh, somewhat of uh, kindred spirits. We're both like huge nerds. And every time we get together, we have like so much fun and we giggle and talk nerdy things. And like we don't get to see each other that much in our normal lives. And I, I miss being around here on a consistent basis. So there is that. And, um, and third, I miss... I miss playing Aster. Um, it was the first role that I got to originate on a series um, and someone who I got to follow through uh, several years of her life. And she is like me in so many ways. And and I admire her in a lot of ways that I wish I was like, I think. And I um, I just, I wonder what happened in her 20s and like where she is now and I have like a whole fan fiction going in my head about that <laughs> and there are, there have definitely been moments where I'm like I wonder if I could re-explore that like I wonder if Susan and Tina would let me do like Aster spinoff <laughs> um but it would probably mess up their storyline so I don't think I'm gonna do it but um but no I, I I miss um I miss playing her I she is a part of me you know um and uh and I get nostalgic for her, for sure.